not exactly uh, thrilled with the judges tonight. Yeah, it was a rough night for the judges. You know what? You know what sucks is is that you know these guys make mistakes all the time, but you can't make mistakes here. And this this is it's bad enough when you know you do it during the fights and things like this. The, you know this girl flies here from Brazil for her opportunity to get in the UFC, you know, and and she uh, she wins the fight. Does anybody not think she won the fight? Am I? Is, is there some? Huh? Yeah, she won, right? I mean, and, and one of the judges had 30-27 the other way. What the fuck fight were you watching, man? That's just crazy. That just makes no sense. And when you're that far off and you're you're scoring that bad, uh, you know, the other fight, the first one, it was a close fight. Close fight, I had it going the other way. Thought the other kid won the fight, but, you know. Is it like, holy shit, you, you, you know, you, you, you went the other, no. But that fight, that fight was. So when you're looking at these fights and like I said, the, you think the other person won, do you automatically go, well, I'm not taking that person because I don't even think they won the fight? Like with, yeah. with, with Dwight? Yeah, yeah, I didn't think they won. Right. I didn't think they won. And again, this, this is a different type of show. You, you have to, you know, the last fight of the night was impressive. You know what I mean? That was impressive, especially when you look at who he was fighting and um, stylistically and experience-wise and everything. Uh, that was impressive. What made you pull the trigger on Muniz? You see, you did, I know you say you like to see a lot of stuff. You, it was kind of a short fight, the submission, second fight of the night. With who? With Andre Muniz. Why, yeah. What, why'd you pull the trigger on, on bringing him in? Like, what was it? Because he, he didn't get to show very much, right? I was, I was wondering that maybe you wouldn't But that's okay. Up. When you go in and win in, you know, uh, devastating fashion like he did, yeah, I'm in. If the judge had scored to Santos, would you sign her? If what? If the judge had scored uh, to Santos, would ha would have signed her? I don't know. They didn't. <laughs> they didn't. So I, I never even got there. So what I'll do is, uh, you know, normally I'll watch the fight. I, I knew too. I, t I told Mick, it's taken an awful long time to score this fight. <laughs> something weird's going on. Th this isn't a hard fight to score. So I knew something weird was going on. So I, I, uh, I, I never even got there, whether I would have or wouldn't have. You know, I think that right now, both of those girls, she, she gets the win. She got, you know, in my opinion, she got a gift. You know, now she's eight and two, and she can work on the holes in her game, and, and Santos too. Santos can go out and win a couple fights, and I think that pretty much everybody would look at Santos and say, well, she won her last fight, let's see how she does in her next two. And if she does well, you count it as her winning three in a row, you know? How did you score that fight? How did I score that fight? Yeah. I don't remember exactly what the score was, but I had Santos winning, you know what I mean? Um, if anything, 29-28, you know? What do you think about Burns? I know you said you like to come in with like a clean slate, not know anybody, but when they're, when they're coming off your show looking for a yeah, fight, yeah. How, how do you look at those fights when it's somebody that you already know who it is? Yeah, so that night I was impressed with that kid anyway. And then him coming in, you know, I, I said, I think he got caught up in the hype. <clears throat> he was a six to one favorite. And uh, you can tell the other kid didn't like being a six to one dog. He came out guns a blazing. And I liked that he was in a fight like that. He kept his composure, did his thing, and then made it look like a six to one. You know, yeah. I liked it. Morales, uh, is it safe to say that's your favorite from tonight? It seems like you're, you're, you're highest on him. Yeah, that was impressive. You know, he hurt him from the first kick. Stayed on it. Um, you know, a guy who keeps walking you down and uh, basically has the same style of fighting as you do. I liked it. Last thing for me, I just want to ask since we didn't get to see you after the weekend. Uh, Usman Covington, is that the fight to make? You got Masvidal out there saying he deserves a title shot, but after what Covington did on Saturday, is that, is that the yeah, fight to I make? Yeah, that's, that's why I put Covington on ESPN. Against a guy like Lawler, um, you know, you could say whatever you want about Covington. You don't like him. You don't this, that, or whatever. He put on a clinic against Lawler, who is a beast. You know, Lawler's been in all the big fights, former world champion, hits like a truck, and uh, Colby completely shut him down. His, his, his cardio was impressive, and, you know, the way that he beat Lawler was even more impressive. What did you do with Masvidal? He's saying he either wants a title shot or Connor, and it doesn't seem like you're going to give him either one of those. You can't, you can't make ultimatums, you know what I mean? Listen, we're going to offer him a fight, and if he accepts the fight, he does. If he doesn't, he doesn't. Cool. Those guys keep saying Madison Square Garden. Any chance that's the date? Mm -hmm.
Usman and, and Covington, they keep saying they want that Madison Square Garden slot. Is that, is that the one that makes sense to you? We'll see. Then we didn't get to talk to you after the Cyborg news, you know. Uh, what did you really make you have the decision to uh, release her? Was the, that video that she posted related to your decision? Just a lot of things, you know. Um, dealing with her has been a nightmare the entire time she's been here. Um, you know, and, and I said the other day in the interview with Laura, there, there was a lot of controversy bringing her in in the first place at, at, at that time. And, uh, <clears throat> and when I did the interview with Laura, we really didn't mention the whole, um, her lying on the, on, the, on the video about what I said, her production team lying about what I said on the video. It's just been, it, it's, it's, it's been a bad experience dealing with Cyborg from day one. Um, you know, we brought her in after she tested positive for steroids and got done with that. We, we made her a clean athlete with the best drug testing policy in all of sports the entire time when she was here, which when you talk about, when she talks about her legacy and her brand, right? Her legacy and her brand, nothing's better than knowing that she's a clean athlete after testing positive for steroids and all the negativity that surrounded her about being a dirty athlete, right? We bring her in here, we do all this stuff, and she was just never happy. Never happy, complaining about everything. She was a nightmare to deal with. And at the end of the day, she knows, I know, Amanda Nunes knows, I tried to make that Nunes fight. She doesn't want it. She doesn't want it. She gets mad when I say I don't blame her. I don't blame her, <laughs> okay? Because if that was Amanda Nunes last Saturday, I think everybody can agree what would have happened in that fight, See. right? So she's unhappy, we're unhappy. She lies and does that thing. See you later, have a nice life. She did post an apology though. Like, was that enough to make peace between you two? Yeah. I don't think there's any peace between me and Cyborg, you know what I mean? I think everybody, can, whether you like me or you don't like me, whatever your opinion of me is, doesn't matter. What she did was dirty. Dirty what she did with the video and all this other stuff. And then meanwhile, she's running around saying, she better get an apology from me. Yeah, I got an apology from her. Because what she did is one of the dirtiest things. You think she, it, it had to kill her to apologize to me kill her to do it. But what she did is one of the dirtiest things that you can do to somebody. That's why she apologized. You even mentioned that you would be willing to give her one fight contract to make that rematch with Amanda Nunes. Was that she doesn't want to fight Amanda Nunes. You guys and the fans need to get it into your head that she did everything she could, including doctoring a video, lying about what I said, to avoid fighting Amanda Nunes. The fans need to just, and the media, need to just get it through your heads that all that shit that was going on, oh, he, he's bullying me. Bullying you, you've been here for five years. What are you talking about? You're talking about stuff that happened five years ago, right? That was five years ago, it was all a smoke screen to not fight Amanda Nunes. She doesn't want that fight. Otherwise, we wouldn't even be having this conversation right now. You know, I don't think there's anybody here. I've had problems over the last 20 years with plenty of fighters. You know what I mean? From Tito Ortiz to Mark Hunt to God, God knows who else. I can't even think off the top of my head. We always made fights, right? She doesn't want to fight Amanda Nunes. Lastly, for me, just what can we expect from the featherweight division? You know, is Amanda going to defend the featherweight the, the yes. belt? Amanda's going to defend both titles just like she always did. Cyborg leaving doesn't matter. We know who the best fighter in the world is at 135 and 145. It's Amanda Nunes. You know, she had the opportunity for her legacy, Cyborg's legacy, to get that fight again. She doesn't want it, right? So we will continue to bring in the best fighters in the world and put them up against Amanda Nunes at 135 and 145 pounds, and she will continue to build her legacy. And, uh, looking back to the, the last five years, if you could, would you do something different in relation to Cyborg? 
No. I wouldn't do anything different. The one thing that I'm glad I did is I pushed her to make sure that she fought Amanda Nunes because she didn't want that fight the first time, let alone the second time. And I said that in that interview. She wanted Cindy Danois or uh, Pam Sorensen. Those are the fights she wanted. She was turning down Amanda Nunes. And I said, that's not going to happen. So we kept pushing and pushing and pushing, and finally we got her to take the Amanda Nunes fight. So I'm happy that I did that. Other than that, no, I wouldn't change one thing in the last five years with Cyborg. And then she was offered the rematch and didn't want it? Oh, I'm sorry, did you just get here? <laughs> <laughs> no, I know you keep telling us that, but I'm saying, like, specifically, you offered it, right? Because, like, in the video, we saw you tell her, hey, we want to make this fight. Amanda tweeted, hey, I want this fight. So it, it, it supported what you were saying all along, right? Yes. What you're reiterating now, but I just want to make it, you know, clear that that's exactly what happened. I just said to her, I, I, you reporters and fans need to get it through your heads that I tried to make this fight. She does not want this fight. She doesn't want this fight. Doesn't want it. I believe you, sir. I so if, if I'm lying, she can call tomorrow and we'll make that fight. She will not call tomorrow, and that fight will not be made because she does not want to fight Amanda Nunes. So you still work with her if she take that fight? She won't take the fight. On a one but the fight. answer is yes. On a one fight? My job is to take that. She won't do a one fight deal. She will not fight Amanda Nunes. She will not fight Amanda Nunes on a half a fight deal. <laughs> oh, that was you? Oh, sorry. <laughs> she will not fight Amanda Nunes on a one fight, ten fight, half a fight deal. She does not want to fight Amanda Nunes. Amanda Nunes will knock her out again in the first round. I know it, you know it, and she knows it. And she will not do that fight. Period. End of story. We have gone round and round with her, you know, and she is surrounded by not very bright people. You know what I mean? You can see how this whole thing played out. Okay? Like I told you, what you, have, you have to look at this objectively and take out however you feel about me and the UFC and, and, and all this bullshit and look at what the real facts are. The fact is, all of this was said and done to avoid fighting Amanda Nunes and she could walk away and look like, oh, they bullied me and this and that and doctoring the video that they doctored and lying and all the things that they've done leading up to here, you know? Cyborg likes to play that she's this really nice person and she's being bullied and all this other bullshit. You also saying that video though that she posted, you know, the real video that you never said that she was afraid of that fight. Right. So if you're saying that she would never take that fight, why do you think we'll Right. Why well, don't I don't think she's afraid to fight Amanda Nunes. She doesn't want to lose again. There's a difference between being afraid to fight somebody. I mean, Cyborg's been fighting her whole, you know, adult life. I'm not saying that she's afraid to fight Amanda Nunes. Being afraid to fight and knowing that you're gonna lose are two different things. That's the shit that I dealt with with Tito Ortiz, too. You know what I mean? When Tito Ortiz didn't take the Chuck fight because he 100% knew that Chuck Liddell was gonna knock him out. That's why he didn't take the fight. Right? There's other fights that Tito would rather take. Same with Cyborg. Cyborg would rather fight Pam Sorensen or, you know, these other girls that she wanted to fight other than Amanda Nunes. Right? Yeah, one more about uh, Contender Series. Uh, so a few of us have been going and covering the weigh-ins, and I'm noticing a, a pretty good-sized crowd is starting to, uh, to well up in, in the lobby. Do you think, it, you think you guys would ever face them off at the weigh-ins? Because people... People really love that. Sure. Sure, we can do that. Cool. Done. Next week. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I, love, I love to see it. All, all this stuff here is sort of a work in progress. You know, we, we do different things every week. It's like, I was saying last week, and you saw this week, that I put out the story about the kid from Liberia, mm -hmm. right? Now, if we had the story of those two girls that fought last week, right? If that story went out a week before that fight happened, there's no way you can't watch that fight, you know? The freaking stories almost make you start crying. Um, we need to do a better job of that. And there's certain things that, you know, we'll figure out and do. But yeah, you want them squared off, we'll do it.
Dan, you know, last week you said that you were leaving to go meet with Pelicci and to go have dinner. Did you guys get anything worked out for uh, Tuck? Yeah, I, I, th I think we made some progress. Yeah, but we're, we're, we're still looking. We're looking for where this thing's going to end up. In a perfect world, in a perfect world, I'm going to say this, and this is going to be all fucking quick, but in a perfect world, I, I want the Ultimate Fighter back on FX. In a perfect world, that would be awesome. Why is that perfect? Because I, because FX is incredible. It's going to be perfect. Dan, Dan, you, you spoke. Uh, and ESPN owns oh, FX. Yeah. For those that don't know. <laughs> you, you, you spoke in your interview with Laura uh, over the weekend about uh, Zufa boxing um, starting back up in October. And uh, I just want to know what your level of excitement is with that and uh, what it could do for the UFC brand and you, you personally. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited about it. Over <clears throat> next door at the headquarters, we're actually building a whole wing. Right now, there's construction going on. Offices are being built, war room, and all that stuff for us to um, be in full swing by hopefully October. So um, I'm excited. I'm excited. I mean, I don't know what else to say. Dave, I'm ready. I'm excited. Timing is perfect, and I'm ready. Do you have any? Uh, do you have any like aspirations for what it would be like? You know, just in terms of uh, what you're looking for uh, to create. Yeah. So I, I have a, I have a lot of different ideas and uh, a lot of different things that I want to do over here. When you guys all toured this place, I think you saw there's a whole gym being built over here too. Yeah. Whole another gym. Any of my people in here? How many square feet is that gym? Do we know? Anybody know how many square feet the new gym is over here? I don't know, but I have past pride. Uh, all right, it's big. It's big. <laughs> it's really big. But, um, and uh, I'm waiting until I get my guy in place, and I want to bounce my ideas with him and get it, get it rolling and figure out what we think the game plan is, and then attack in November. What's the goal for Zuko Boxing? To be the biggest, to, to, just to play? Just uh, to play? So the key is exactly what the key is here, to go after the best up and coming fighters in the world and the best fight the best. That's it. Um, I have a lot of different ideas on how to do that, and I just wanna, I, I wanna get together with my guy we run through all, everything, we come up with a plan, and then we execute in November. Dave, staying with boxing, Clarissa Shields, Olympian, undisputed boxing champion, has been talking a lot about wanting to fight Amanda Nunez. How interested are you in another crossover fight? How interested is Amanda? I'm not, but, but I would never say no. I think if Amanda Nunez continues on her reign, you know, and continues, anything is possible. Um, Anything is possible that, that we could do with her. And going back to, to Robbie and Kobe, how surprised were you, were you about Robbie's inactivity in that fight? Yeah, I was really surprised. I thought that uh, <clears throat> that Kobe did a really good job of shutting him down. Um, kicks, punches, takedowns, um, mixing it up, and his cardio was, was unbelievable. Unbelievable. What did you make of the Matt Hughes comments he made afterwards? Uh, I think it was very Kobe, you know? Super, uh, you know, Dan, he's Dan Lambert's guy, right? And you know, Matt Hughes is like best friends with Dan Lambert. They're together all the time. So, uh, yeah, it was typical Colby Covington. Anything else? 11,000 square feet, by the way. Huh? 11,000 square feet. It's 11,000 square feet, the gym that's going in here. And it should be done around November, December. So, everything, all the timing is perfect, lined up. See you guys next week. <laughs>